Hi there. How are you? Welcome back to M Talks. We're going to continue talking about making money work for us. This time I'm going to talk about something which is a very fancy type of an opportunity. A party conversation topic, a major party conversation topic. People think about this when they think about this they think about it's like a tree with low hanging fruit just out there for the taking but the fact is over a period of time it has made people lose their fortune there are more stories of woe than of success people have lost their livelihood people have come down to the streets but still the charm is there still people see money in it people are attracted to it maybe we will understand it if we understand how this all began how it started why it came about and what is the purpose of its existence what is the utility of the stock market and if you go through this video and if you are patient enough to go through it fully there are a lot of indicators out here which can help you in understanding this enigma stock markets have been there since the 1500s and as a concept it was a place it's all started off in a place called antwerp which is uh, in today's belgium i should say it started off with people speculating here is the right word speculating on commodities or on goods which they think will fetch a higher price at a later point in time so they invest or they hoard it so the buying and selling of these goods or commodities in large quantity with the sole objective of speculating was how it all started there was another side another activity which went on as well which is buying and selling of debt instruments when i say debt instruments it's like a small financier loans to let's say about 10 or 15 people and he has a written document which proclaims the debt that they owe to him the money that he is loaned plus a certain interest component then what he does is he comes to this erstwhile so called stock market and sells it at a discounted price so the guy who buys it will get his money back after one year or two years or whatever is the loan period with interest but this small time financier sells it at a lower interest rate he takes the money out and he makes that margin between what he is sold it to this guy at and what he is supposed to get see this is how people very smartly did this kind of a transaction buying and selling of debts buying and selling of commodities there were you know big time players who went to farms and you know gave money for the entire produce that the farm was supposed to produce like it could be it could be onions carrots it could be anything the entire farm's output was bought up front the farmer is happy because he got money he doesn't have to go looking for customers after the uh, the product is cultivated he doesn't have to worry about wastage storage transportation and so on and so forth he is happy and the guy who buys it lock stock and barrel controls the price this is how big players played this market so it basically started off as an activity which is based on speculation so the concept of stock market started without what today the stock market does which is dealing in uh, shares and securities and bonds and so on and so forth it started off completely as a speculatory activity okay today let's come back to today what does the stock market do today it is a place i mean till very recently it's a physical place where people trade shares of companies securities which means debt instruments and bonds government bonds and public sector bonds and so on and so forth interesting fact did you know the first publicly traded share was issued by a company called the dutch east india company it was the first publicly traded share for a very long time almost for about 50 60 years when when you talk about east india company in spite of their nefarious and infamous presence in india it did not start off with the indian operations the dutch east india company was nothing but a company which was called governor and company of merchants of london trading with the east indies 
that was the East India Company. Anyhow, that's just a small uh, historical fact. So then what happened was companies, instead of going to financiers and you know taking money or our banks for the matter, taking money at uh, large interest, decided to sell a part of their company, a share of their company to the public to raise funds. They found it much easier and cheaper. So then the stock market, those days, most of it was done in coffee shops where people, you know, a group of people will come together and say, okay, I will buy this share at this price and somebody will say, okay, I will sell it at this price. And that's how it happened. And once it, it was a very um, unorganized activity. And then they found there was a lot of skirmishes, a lot of issues and a lot of uh, falsification of papers and misrepresentation and so on and so forth. So they identified somebody who is a leader in that community or that locality to kind of monitor it or kind of uh, manage it. And they paid him a small commission. So that's how your today's stock exchange came into being. That was the unorganized early stock broke, stock exchange. Somebody who managed it. And even now, today, the stock exchanges are not governed by the local government. It's an independent ent entity. And if government tries to manage it, there will be a lot of activities which they cannot control, which will go on. So they rather make money out of it, tax it, make some commissions, and then just regulate it. Just watch it. And the good part for the governments also is that since today the stock markets are global, I mean, there are no boundaries. People from anywhere can invest anywhere. There's money coming in from different parts of the world. So the economy has got a lot of liquidity flowing in. So nobody wants to touch that, obviously. This is how the stock market started. Early on, when there were limited number of companies whose shares were traded, there was a science to it. There was a logic. People saw the project for which the company went public or, you know, took money from the public or, you know, issued shares to the public. They saw the performance of the project and then they know that the results will be good because the company will give a share of the profits to the shareholder, obviously. So based on that, the prices of the shares were traded, you know, earlier at a higher value and people were willing to buy them anticipating a better performance and you know the company doing well and so on and so forth. So there was a logic to it. There was a there was a what should I say a system it worked. But then when these big players with money with a lot of disposable and uh, discretionary funds came into the market they decided that they can play the prices. Simple thing a, a large player will go and buy a huge quantity of a particular share so what happens? Immediately the share prices go up. So when the share prices go up, the people in the market, oh my God, Mr. X, who is a billionaire, is investing in the share. So we also should pitch in. So they buy in small quantities, but millions of people buy in small quantities. The prices keep going up further and further. So what does the big Mr. X do? When it goes to a certain level, he dumps it off. He sells whatever he is bought at a profit. So who is left carrying the can? The small investor. So they played on the sentiment, not on the scientific parameters. They played on the sentiment. And today, because of, you know, the globalization of all economies, because of, you know, uh, global parameters impacting everywhere, you don't even know whether you can play it in a, in a scientific way or you should play it based on sentiments, based on market sentiments, based on the number of people investing in it and so on and so forth. Because believe me, if there is a small earthquake in Tokyo, it reacts in New York, it reacts in India, it reacts everywhere. So how do you anticipate this? How do you scientifically predict all these things? These are the vagaries of the stock market. So believe me, as much as you see trillions and trillions of dollars there, which is out there, people assume, okay, we have understood this, we'll go and make money. It's not so easy, folks. It's not at all easy. Let's bring it down to what it means for us. Let's look at some of the benefits that we think we get out of the stock. One, the thrill of, you know, getting this short term profit. You invest uh, um, hundred thousand bucks and maybe within two months it becomes 120. So there's this thrill. Okay, fine. Within two months I've made so much of money. Second is you can put small quantums of money, beg your pardon. It doesn't have to be a big money. I mean, you can buy small shares 
lower value shares shares are not very high priced not your uh, big value shares and so on and so forth you can buy a small share and you can watch it grow as well so small ticket investments are possible third is there is this perception of intelligence when you make when you're involved in the stock market <laughs> i i don't know uh, how many of those um, get motivated by that but it is there so if you actually invest and if you make a little money there is sub- a subject that you can uh, talk about in your next party okay i'm going to move on to what are the obvious downsides one it is so volatile it is so unpredictable and it is possible for you to lose your entire money whatever you invested can get erased completely there is no protection from the government there is no insurance there is nothing two if you are serious about making money in the stock market you've got to monitor it constantly it's not like a fixed deposit or a real estate where you put it in and then you forget about it. forget about it to monitor it because you have to know when to sell it you have to know when to book your profit you have to know when to cut your loss see that's the other thing people see on paper their 100000 whatever they invested has become 120000 on paper that's just notional profit mind you the profit actually happens when you book it when you sell the share and you realize the money which you will not get incomplete meaning if the market price says 120000 is the value of your holding when you sell it and get it back you will not get the 20000 profit you will get 20000 less brokerage less taxes for the stock exchange less whatever if there is a taxation on capital gains in your region minus all that is what you will get so the actual profit may be 15000 or sometimes when you go to sell it it may be higher let's be happy about it if that happens third thing very important for the banking community anybody who invests in the stock market invest speculate whatever you want to call it is a negative profile people are scared to let the money or even if they do the interest rates that they charge are much higher always be careful about it. fourth thing it is semi liquid yeah liquidity is there but you have to still sell it you have to go find a broker and then you have to hand over the documentation to him and all that stuff. then there is this hidden charges if you want to actually invest and take delivery of that particular stock you have to have an account a dmat account for which you have to pay for on a periodic basis there is the stock exchange charges like i mentioned and this is brokerage like I so all these things have to be factored in what are the things you have to consider before you actually start looking at the stock know the difference between investment and speculation do you want to invest or do you want to speculate please understand what is it that you want out of the stock market speculation means looking at short term profits or short term gains without actually going through a systematic way of investing as in understanding first of all identifying what share that you want to invest in what stock you want to invest in understanding the growth pattern understanding the company that has issued the share how they have been performing how the share itself has been moving over the last whatever time that you want to analyze without doing all the study if you want to put in the money just expecting it to you know grow for some reason based on you know some people rec- recommending or advising or uh, some stock tip that you've got that is clearly speculation investment is a different ball game where you study the opportunity you identify the share or the stock that you want to invest in based on the company the financial soundness of the company the way it has been progressing and then you look at the stocks also the share prices as well as to how it has been progressing over a period of time and then you see at what point at what price you're willing to invest expecting what kind of growth over what period of time and that becomes an investment again the question is do you invest based on scientific or you analyze all these factors in a scientific way to invest or you look at market sentiments you look at okay these are big ticket items which will never go down they'll only appreciate that's a sentiment from the market which you pick up and based on which okay fine i'll put x amount of money in this particular share or stock second thing you have to obviously when you make money from the stock market you would have to pay taxes and in i think that's applicable in most countries 
So whatever profit that you are budgeting as you know wanting to earn out of this particular investment, you have to look at how much money you spend. Averaging out. What do I mean by averaging out? You buy a particular share, let's say at 100 bucks. The share goes down to let's say 90. You don't want to book your losses. You don't want to cut your losses and say, okay, I've lost 10 bucks. It's okay. I will remove my money and put it in some other stock. No. A lot of people with this fear of booking their loss, they buy more at 90. Thinking when it goes to 100, they will average out. They go to 110, they make more money. But that's a big mistake that people make. People have lost millions trying to average out. And then again, like I said, understand the difference between notional profit and actual profit when you book the profit and get the money into your account after paying whatever uh, a stock broke, booking commission and stock exchange commission and taxes and so on. And then, like I said, be wary of you being in the negative list, negative credit list for the banks. Keep all this in mind. And even after that, if you want to invest in the stock market, there is a way to do it. If you had followed the video and seen how it all started, seen the objectives, seen the motivations of why people worked with the stock market, you would have by now understood. But then if you want more clarity, do write in to me. I'll be ha happy to share some of the methods that a lot of institutional investors use to invest in stock markets today. It's working and we can make it work for us as well. So do write in to me. Till then, thank you for listening. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Bye for now.